Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Theresa May's deputy, Damien Green, is under renewed pressure tonight after claims that he accessed pornography on his Commons computer. A retired detective says he found thousands of pornographic images on a computer in Mr Green's office nine years ago and that it was ridiculous to suggest that anyone else could be responsible. Mr Green, the first Secretary of State, has again insisted that the allegations are false. Our Home Affairs correspondent, Danny Shaw, has this exclusive report. He's Theresa May's oldest and most trusted political ally, now battling for cabinet survival over claims he watched pornography on his work computer. Could I just ask you to leave? Is that, is that possible? The allegations, which he denies, centre on computers seized in this police raid over leaked documents from the Home Office. Now, a detective involved in the inquiry has given me his account of what he discovered. I had an exemplary record. Neil Lewis spent 25 years in the Metropolitan Police before retiring due to ill health. He has multiple sclerosis. In 2008, he was given the task of examining Damien Green's work computer. The shocking thing was that uh, as, I, as I was viewing, I noticed a lot of pornography thumbnails, um, which indicated uh, web browsing. Um, but a lot. There's a lot of them. How many images did you see on that? Thousands. I, I, I... Thousands of pornographic images? Thumbnail images. This is the one notebook you kept? Yes. Yeah. Neil Lewis still has his notebook from the time detailing what he saw on the computer. There's a reference to briefing officers about pornography. He claimed two other detectives also saw the material. It was legal and not extreme, he said. Similar images were also seen on a laptop, he claimed. How can you be sure that it was Damien Green who was accessing that pornography? There's a sort of phrase, you can't put fingers on a keyboard. So I can't say that, but the computer was in Mr Green's office, on his desk, logged in, you know, it's his account, his name, um, in between um, browsing pornography, he was sending emails from his, from his account, his personal account, um, reading documents, writing documents, um, and it was just impossible, it was sort of exclusive and extensive that, you know, it, it was ridiculous to suggest that anybody else could have, could have done it. Outside his home in Kent today, Damien Green protested his innocence. A Cabinet Office inquiry has been examining his conduct. Mr Green, can you... I'd, I'd, OK. Um, I, 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 I've said uh, that I'm not commenting any further uh, while the investigation is going on. Uh, I've maintained all along, I still maintain it is the truth that uh, I didn't download uh, or look at pornography uh, on my computer, but obviously while the investigation is going on, I can't say any more at the moment. One of Mr Green's colleagues in Parliament rallied to his defence, saying the detective's account didn't add up. The pattern of behaviour he describes is, it seems to me, entirely inconsistent with the normal uh, pattern of behaviour uh, of an MP in Parliament. We simply do not have hours to sit in front of our com computers and browse leisure websites of whatever variety. Did you look at pornography at all? There are now questions about how apparently confidential information about Damien Green's computers was made public. Scotland Yard is looking into it. Danny Shaw, BBC News. Our Deputy Political Editor John Pinar is at Westminster for us tonight. So what now? Where does this go next? Well, there's an enormous amount riding on the outcome of this drama and not simply the future of Damien Green. Tonight he's adding nothing to that flat denial of viewing pornography, but his political friends are rallying round, some of them accusing uh, Neil Lewis of breaching operational confidentiality. And there's David Davis, the Brexit secretary, who I'm told has warned the Prime Minister not to sack Damien Green, certainly not on the say-so of former officers who he believes have, are out to get Damien Green. Why?
because Mr Green's friends say the police raid in 2008 in the course of a, a leak inquiry that backfired on the police. They were criticised and this is about revenge. One of Mr Davis's friends told me that he might contemplate resigning in support of Damon Green if he has to and others said there'd be no such threat, at least not yet. So we wait the outcome of that uh, a report for Theresa May. It is a, a difficult time indeed. She may have to choose soon whether she needs to lose a very close ally at a difficult political time. Difficult because of a host of issues, including Brexit. And when do we learn? Well, as I understand it, as I'm told now, we could have the answers to those questions in a very few days, perhaps early next week. John Pienaar in Westminster, thank you. Now, the first state secretary, Damien Green, has denied that he watched or downloaded any pornographic images after a former police officer claimed thousands of images, all legal, were found on a computer used by Mr Green in 2008. Mr Green's allies have accused the retired detective of a, of a vendetta, while Scotland Yard has launched its own inquiry into how the information was made public. Mr Green is the subject of a cabinet office inquiry into allegations of sexually inappropriate behaviour. Our political correspondent Michael Crook reports. This story stems from 2008 when Damien Green was an opposition spokesman and police raided his Commons office to investigate whether he'd been procuring leaks from inside the Home Office. Today, the police detective who examined Green's computer told the BBC it contained lots of thumbnail pornographic images. I was, I was surprised to see that on a parliamentary computer. How many images did you see on that? Thousands. I, I, I... Thousands of pornographic images? Thumbnail images. How can you be sure that it was Damien Green who was accessing that pornography? There's a sort of phrase, you can't put fingers on a keyboard. So I can't say that, but the computer was in Mr Green's office on his desk, logged in, you know, it's his account, his name. But Damien Green, as before, emphatically denied the allegations. I still maintain it is the truth that uh, I didn't download uh, or look at pornography uh, on my computer, but obviously while the investigation is going on, I can't say any more than that. Today's claims against Mr Green by Neil Lewis repeat those made by Lewis's former boss, Bob Quick, in a draft statement to the Leveson inquiry five years ago. And Quick told Leveson the original leak investigation into Green shouldn't have been dropped. We had to have a legitimate reason to stop the investigation, and there wasn't one, and I didn't think it was appropriate. But some Tories denounce what they see as retired policemen behaving badly, just as they say they did in 2008. It was a quite disgraceful uh, politicisation of the police force, an improper search that may or may not have found some saucy but legal pictures in which the police or retired police officers who ended up finding their careers didn't go quite how they might have liked them to go have now decided to wheel out at a point when they can embarrass Mr Green. I think it reflects very badly on these retired police officers, both for being involved with the search in the first place and then for abandoning the confidentiality that innocent people have a right to expect from the police. Somebody's lying. What concerns me about what has come out today, it's not really that different to what we, we thought we already knew, but the fact of the matter is, is that we have to make sure that politicians are being held to the same standards as people in a normal workplace. Now, anywhere I've ever worked and anywhere I know of as a workplace, you would be fired for looking at pornography on your work computer in work time. Green got a boost today, though, from the Brexit secretary, David Davis, Green's boss, back in 2008. He's told number 10 Green shouldn't lose his job from police breaching their duty of confidentiality. But friends deny reports Davis has threatened to quit. And Michael Crick joins me from Westminster now. Michael, where do we go from here? Well, Damien Green and uh, his friends have made it clear they're not giving this one up without a fight. Friends who are often close to David Davis, the kind of people who helped Andrew Mitchell over the Plebgate affair uh, three or four uh, years ago. Tory civil libertarian MPs who feel that over the years the police have often behaved badly. And their cause was helped today in a way by Scotland Yard announcing an inquiry into Neil Lewis and whether there's been a 
breach of confidential information. But remember, this inquiry by the Cabinet Office is into whether Damien Green breached the ministerial code. Now, back in 2008, he was only in opposition. He couldn't have breached the code by watching uh, pornography if he did. The question is really whether he's lying about it uh, now. And it will be a difficult decision for Theresa May when the report, she gets it in the next uh, week or two, because Damien Green is such a close ally at the heart of government, particularly at a time when the Brexit talks are coming to something of a climax. Michael Crick. Well, the Conservative MP Crispin Blunt joins us now from Rygate. And you're a friend of Damien Green and are standing by him, and that's all very laudable and honourable. But do you accept that if he is shown to have lied... It doesn't matter what it's about. If he has lied, he must be sacked. Yes, and I'm absolutely certain he hasn't lied. Uh, Damien and I were elected in 1997, and he's uh, one of my colleagues in that time who has the highest standards of uh, public service, a duty of public service, of probity and integrity. So I, it would be utterly astonishing if he was lying. Well, he's your and, friend, and, and I would uh, expect you to the, say that. Given the, given, given the policeman's account of uh, what he found, uh, that is, in my view, inconsistent with the kind of normal behaviour of a shadow, busy shadow minister. What, you don't have time to and, look at websites? Uh, how, they would, how, they would, how they would use their uh, IT. We don't have hours of leisure time uh, in our offices to peruse leisure websites of whatever variety. And uh, it's you don't need certainly hours. in my office... You don't there need are times, hours. Certainly in my office there are times um, when... Uh, I don't get time to switch my desktop on during the day, and my uh, my own online activity is conducted yeah, through but, but, but the we're mobile talking about platforms Damien we have, Green's and computer. my staff Just hold on a second. Just hold on a second. Please, please let me just try and get a question in. My staff are able to... Let, let me try and get a question in. We're talking about Damien Green's computer. A former policeman who has nothing to gain from this has come forward saying this is what he found. Why should the British people and believe I don't... your friend instead of a British policeman. I don't agree. I don't agree with Jess Phillips that, uh, both pe that someone is definitely lying. That is not necessarily the case. Uh, there would have been uh, people who would have had access uh, to, to that com computer, and you can't establish uh, uh, who was then access to the computer as the policeman Well, he's uh, explained it's himself. inconceivable my that it could be anyone have access. My staff... Because he was also sending uh, emails... Staff, will you... Are you going to? Are you, uh, my staff have access uh, to uh, my computer because if they, an email needs to be sent out in my name from my account, uh, they need to be able uh, to do that because uh, much of the time one is away from the office, and that's well, why so, this doesn't. So quite your staff send emails in your right. name today. So it is not. It, 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 they, uh, on my instruction, yes, they, yes, they, yes, they can. And I, th I imagine that most of my colleagues do operate in that way because we don't live a life where we're actually able uh, to spend lots of time sitting in our office browsing our computers. Parliamentary life simply isn't like that, and it's certainly not like that for leaders of uh, shadow ministerial teams or ministers uh, plainly. OK, would you accept that the evidence that this former policeman has brought to light today should be entered into the investigation into Mr Green, which is not just about what he was using his computer for, but is also about allegations of harassment of a, of a, of a journalist? Uh, no, I don't think there should be. It, is, it doesn't reflect well on uh, retired police officers uh, to surface what is really nothing more than uh, malicious gossip but this was arising in the public from uh, well, an why office search it be that should never have happened in the first place. I, you, um, can I answer the question? Um, that should never have uh, arisen in, from a search that should never have arisen in, in the first place. Uh, and none of the things referenced in this amount to a criminal uh, offence. But that's beside the point. There may be point. administrative issues for the House... There may be administrative issues for, that, for the House of Commons. What he was um, doing is beside the point. Uh, but the, the, it's the question of his years, honesty. These are now ten years out of date. What he was Precisely. doing is beside and the I point. Think... It, well, yes, the pornography was perfectly legal. The question is, and has he now, lied about now... it? Uh, and if he has lied now about it, that, of course, uh, would, be, uh, would have him in terminal trouble. But I'm absolutely certain he has not. I know this man for 20 years. This is not something he is going to lie about. And you're trying to I keep the evidence out um, of the investigation. I'm absolutely That's not the in point. a position. And I don't accept, and I don't accept, 
uh, that it is uh, that it is Jess Phillips's point that someone is lying here of these two. I don't think that is necessarily uh, the case. The policeman's account is inconsistent with the kind of behaviour of a shadow minister or a, a, a minister or indeed most MPs of their working life in the House of, House of Commons. Chris and it is really poor performance that the police, retired police officers should produce these allegations when it simply helpfully coincides with other issues that Mr Green is very properly addressing. Uh, Chris Blunt, thank you for joining us. Now, once upon a time, the police and the Conservative Party seem like natural allies, but relations have got rather strained of late, and today Tory MPs were out in force to lay into the police for their treatment of Theresa May's deputy over allegations he watched internet porn at work. Uh, this is what the man himself had to say. Uh, I've maintained all along, I still maintain it is the truth that uh, I didn't download uh, or look at pornography uh, on my computer, but obviously while the investigation is going on, I can't say anymore. Uh, many people did think the police's behaviour looked uh, a bit odd, to be honest, but in the end, the central allegation is either true or it's not. And if it's true, well, in any other walk of life, uh, you'd surely be sacked for that. Our political correspondent, Libby uh, Vina, joins me now. Libby, I mean, when are we going to find out whether this allegation is true or not, or are we ever going to find out? Well, Tom, this is a monumental distraction for the government. It isn't as if uh, Theresa May hasn't got a lot else on her plate, and you'd think that she'd want, in the jargon, to close this down. But the fact is this inquiry has been going on for four weeks now, and every time we ask at lobby briefings when are we going to hear the result of the uh, Cabinet Office inquiry, we're told it's very important that these things are done properly. But nevertheless, the question you pose, people at home will be wondering, did he, the man who is the Prime Minister's deputy, sit in his office in Parliament, admittedly nine years ago, and look at porn on the internet. And people want to know the answer to that, and I think they want to know it quickly. As Jess Phillips, the Labour MP, yeah. um, said uh, today, she said that uh, essentially in any other walk of life, if you were discovered downlo downloading pornography on your computer, you would be fired. That would be the end of it. Now, Mr Green strenuously denies that he did download pornography, but I think there is enormous pressure on the Prime Minister to get this sorted soon, and therefore I think we will hear in the next few days the outcome of the inquiry and her decision as to what to do. And briefly, you've got the Brexit Secretary, David Davies, apparently saying he'd resign if Damien Green is fired. I mean, it's a bit weird, isn't it? Well, you mentioned the questions about the police uh, as behaviour in the past, and there have been a number of Tory MPs coming out to support Damien Green today. This uh, suggestion that David Davis would actually be prepared to resign, you have to remember he was um, Damien Green's boss at the time when the police raided his office. The uh, documents that were passed on to him that the police allegedly were looking for uh, perhaps were done at uh, David Davis' behest, and so perhaps he does feel that uh, he needs That's to stand right. up for his, his former junior. Right. OK, thank you very much indeed. We will uh, see. The case of pornography allegedly found on a minister's office computer raises serious questions. Is the deputy PM lying about what he knows, or has a police officer seriously overreached his powers? Today, Theresa May's deputy, Damien Green, strongly denied once again that he had downloaded or viewed pornography on his office computer. It came as a response to the claims of a retired police detective, Neil Lewis, who claimed thousands of legal images were found on it nine years ago and that the investigation at the time should never have been closed. He believes it was in the public interest to reveal this now. Scotland Yard is investigating him for allegedly leaking the confidential material. So... Who do we trust and how comfortable are we with the way this has all emerged? We'll speak to a former police officer and to Damien Green's colleague Dominic Grieve. First, here's David Grossman. It's worth perhaps reminding ourselves why police came to search computers in Damien Green's office in 2008. He was then opposition spokesman who'd embarrassed the then Labour government time and time again with leak after leak. The Home Office claimed a threat to national security. The Cabinet Office asked the Met to find the mole. Without a warrant, the Met persuaded the Commons authorities to let them search Damien Green's parliamentary office. There was outrage amongst MPs, especially as the police concluded that he hadn't committed a criminal offence. The then Director of Public Prosecutions, who threw out the case, is now a Labour shadow minister. I have concluded that the information leaked was not secret information or information affecting national security. And an exemplary record. Skip forward nine years and retired police officers are now alleging that Mr Green's computer had pornography on it, although nothing illegal. 
Former PC Neil Lewis examined one of the computers in 2008 and has spoken exclusively to BBC News. The shocking thing was that uh, as, I, as I was viewing, I noticed a lot of pornography thumbnails, um, which indicated uh, web browsing. Um, but a lot, there's a lot of them. Mr Green, however, denies having done anything wrong. I've said uh, that I'm not commenting any further uh, while the investigation is going on. Uh, I've maintained all along, I still maintain it is the truth that uh, I didn't download uh, or look at pornography uh, on my computer, but obviously while the investigation is going on, I can't say any more. The raid on Mr Green's parliamentary office on the fourth floor of this building on the far corner was controversial at the time and it's controversial again. Many Conservative MPs want to know what on earth the police are playing at. Any information they found was obtained using police powers. They found nothing illegal, and yet evidence is now being put in the public domain. There's anger too that after his retirement, former Constable Lewis has kept his notebook of the investigation and is now showing it to reporters. So nearly a decade later than to disinter this based on one surviving evidential source, which is one notebook Constable Lewis has kept in his possession after his retirement, uh, uh, seems more than a little odd. The allegations against Mr Green have come not just from former Constable Lewis, but also from the far more senior former Assistant Commissioner, Bob Quick. Is this the police, though, getting involved in politics? I don't think so. There's plenty of politicians around that the police dislike a lot more than uh, Damien Green. So, you know, he's not, he wouldn't be top of the list, if you like. Um, I know Bob Quick uh, a little, and he's a, an honest man with integrity. I, I certainly wouldn't anticipate that he's doing this maliciously or anything else. Uh, it would just appear to be that you've got police officers that have some information, uh, and they've shared it in um, the way they have. Meanwhile, the politics is getting complicated. A Cabinet Office investigation into Damien Green's conduct is expected to report imminently, and Cabinet colleagues want the matter concluded swiftly. But the Brexit Secretary, David Davis, has apparently told friends that he may resign if Damien Green is forced out. That was David Grossman. Now, Dominic Grieve is a Conservative MP, a former Attorney General, and was Shadow Home Secretary at the time of Damien Green's arrest back in 2008. Tim Brain is former Chief Constable of Gloucestershire. Very nice of you both to come in this evening. Thanks for joining us. Tim Brain, do you accept this was unacceptable behaviour? This is chilling, isn't it, that police should have your computer and once they have it, they can just use it against you whenever they want? Uh, well, they're not using the computer again this evening. We're looking at notes that the officer kept and has kept for a very long time. There's nothing very sinister. When he was told to destroy. The, uh, well, I don't know that, if he was told to destroy them. Um, interestingly, he was told to destroy them. I find that quite an interesting um, observation, if that was made. Um, I certainly have got um, at home lots of police records that go back 40 years. There's nothing particularly odd about individual officers keeping their own notes. Um, and certainly nobody's ever told me to destroy any of that. So, so we've you, got, we, we're, not looking, we're not looking at the computer. Uh, we're looking at somebody's recollection of what is, they consider to be important. Mm. And I think we've got to put this in the context of how this story is unraveled. We've got to go back to the Weinstein revelations and the kind of um, moral panic that then gripped Westminster in the immediate aftermath of that. Allegations were made, a cabinet office inquiry has opened up and police officers have come forward with what they consider to be relevant information to that inquiry. And that's the context we're talking about. You think that there is public interest in this, do you? Genuine public interest in, in trying to recall whether a minister might have had pornography on his computer? Well, let's just think about this as a workplace computer to start with and to think whether we are happy um, that people, our MPs, um, can have this kind of material on what is an official computer. Uh, and I think, as a member of the public, I would like to know the answer to that. And I think nobody is actually doubting the fact that there is some kind of electronic trace of this material on a computer. So we need to have some answers. Now this information is in the public domain. Let's ask Dominic Grieve, are you happy with that? No, this can't be right. The police are given powers by Parliament that other citizens don't have to investigate crime, including carrying out acts like removing, acquiring data that nobody else can. And it's for the purpose of a criminal investigation. 
they acquire that information, whether it's correct or not, and then they decide many years later to put it in the public domain because they think it's going to make an important point. They're in flagrant breach of their own code of conduct and practice. No, if... they're in flagrant breach. And if they thought it was relevant to this inquiry, then what they should have done was to go to Cressida Dick, the Chief Commissioner, and to say, might this be relevant to the inquiry you being did. carried out at the Cabinet Office? And then it would be handed over. Neil but, Lewis but, offered to go to the inquiry. Well, they didn't take him up on it, and that was why he well, went may, to the maybe, press. But maybe the police question, thought though, it wasn't relevant. If they have this kind of information about a minister who was mm -hmm. back in the spotlight, shouldn't they be doing the public a service by coming forward and saying, yes, we remember this, even if it was a decade ago? No, most certainly not. I'm, I, I was Attorney General. I can tell you in my time as Attorney General, I've acquired all sorts so of informa even, uh, uh, information which it would be grossly improper for me to put in the public even domain. if there was pornography on that computer that had been put there downloaded and was being looked at all those years ago by by Damien Green himself you're it, saying no no relevance the, the police the police went to Westminster in 2008 because it was an allegation of a breach of the official secrets act actually they carried out a, a cack handed investigation which attracted quite a lot of public criticism I don't know what they found in the course of that inquiry but it's quite apparent that what they found was not criminal. Even on their own say-so, it didn't lead to any criminal prosecution. It didn't lead to any criminal investigation, a separate one. And eight years later, they choose to put material that an ordinary citizen would be prohibited from acquiring under data protection rules into the public domain for th on their own judgment. Tim now, there is a way of dealing with that. If you think something's relevant, you do it by a proper official means. You do not go freelancing as these two officers have done, and it has the smack of the police state about it. it it's very, I find it very worrying. Do you worrying. think this is about vendetta? I mean, it does, it does have that sense uh, of sort of Benji the bin man somewhere along well, the line, doesn't I, I it, think going we, through? I think we just have to look at Mr Lewis today. Um, I've never seen that officer before in my life until we've seen the images today. He doesn't strike me as a very vengeful person going through a series of vengeful acts. So I think we have to look for... Do you for, think he was right we, to do it, then? We have to look for a different motivation. Um, and um, of, police officers can feel very strongly about um, information that they might feel that the public should know about that is being suppressed. Now, these officers are taking a risk in doing what they're doing. The first risk they're taking is the internal inquiry. The second risk, particularly in, what, in case of Mr Lewis today, is the court of public scrutiny through a slander or libel action. Now, they've taken this big risk. So I'm asking the question, why have they been prepared to take this big risk other than the fact they feel this is information that should get into the public domain? What do you want to happen now? Do you want this to go to Cresta Dick? Do you want to hear from her? Do you think the PM should dismiss this whole investigation as a result of police actions. Where are you? Well, I, I think we must be careful not to get muddled. There was an allegation against Damien Green of uh, misconduct, which is being inquired into by the Cabinet Office. He denies it. That's a serious allegation. It's quite right it should be investigated. I'm not sure I entirely understand the li alleged link between that inquiry and the allegation that the pornography of a legal kind was found on his computer. He denies that he accessed it. And you believe it. What if he was lying? But, but uh, that's not the issue. If, forgive me. What, the issue at the moment is, is it proper for two retired police officers in breach of the police code of conduct to take information which they acquired or say they acquired Even during the, the course of an says, criminal investigation. What if the public feels the public that that is something but, that they need to know about? We know that with historic cases, people are always being blamed for not coming forward with information that they had at their fingertips. Maybe that's what these we two police, the officers police felt. We give the police powers that other people do not have. They are not and must not be allowed to abuse those powers. There are ways of dealing with allegations. The police thought this was relevant. There are perfectly clear channels through the Metropolitan Police Commissioner for dealing with it, think, not by, not by I going to the press. I, th it, I, it, think, I, I, I think, what we're, I think what we're seeing here is exactly what the politicians would like it to be, to focus on the police well, and not on themselves. The OK, thank you both very much indeed. Thank you.